Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Haloyim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Hakodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Barachah Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um. Without further ado, man, we'll just hop straight mm -hmm. into the into the lesson. This is the book of Revelation mm -hmm. 16 and 15. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You know, and, and what we're going to go into is about um pretty much keeping your garments and what that means, you know. What that means by by keeping your garment, you know, and it's um we're going to tie it in with the same thing that was said in the third chapter, in the eleventh verse. Yahweh says, "Behold, I come quickly." Right, like how he said, "He come as a thief." Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Right, so you're supposed to be crowned, and you're supposed to have your garments on. And we're going to go and explain what are those things mean. The importance of a uh, uh, of 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 staying clothed and and and, and continually uh, having that crown upon your head. So, without further ado, we just hop into um. Got a couple scriptures lined up. Let's get a uh, let's let's start with this. This is the book of Isaiah, fifty-two and one. It says, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, right? From that confused state that we were in. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So it says, Awake and put on our beautiful garments, right? In Revelation, it says, For us to keep our garments. Right. And what in, in, in what are these beautiful garments? We're going to get into it and explain it. But first, let's get this precept right here. This is the, the book of Baruch. Chapter five and one, it says, put off, O Jerusalem, the garment of mourning and affliction and put on the comeliness of the glory that cometh from the most high forever. You see? Awake, put on that beautiful garment, right? Cast about thee a double garment of the righteousness which cometh from the heavenly father and set a diadem on thy head of the glory of the everlasting. You see? So it says put a double garment of the righteousness which cometh from the most high. And what is that? Let's get the book of uh, Job. Chapter 3. And verse 14, it says, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was a robe and a diadem. Same thing it said in Baruch, right? So it says, put on righteousness as a robe, as a, uh, this is what clothed us. This is what uh, 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 covers our nakedness. And the nakedness is our shame. Our shame is what our sins that we, that, that, that we were wallowing in. But now uh, this garment, this glorious uh, 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 clothing have covered us, right? And what is that? Well, let's continue to read. This is the book of Isaiah 61 and verse 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my power. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. So, so, so what, well, what is that going into? What is that saying? Well, let's get into the, uh, the righteousness of the Lord, the, uh, the robe, the clothing, the, uh, the crown. And let's, uh, start with this one. This is Sirach. 27 and verse 8 it says if thou followest righteousness thou shalt um yep if thou followest righteousness thou shalt obtain her and put her on as a glorious long robe let's find out who the her is speaking about 
Let's get Sirach the sixth chapter. And let's go to the 27th verse. Search and seek, and she shall be made known unto thee. And when thou hast got hold of her, let her not go. And to her, when you read up, it's talking about wisdom. Verse 22. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. You see? So wisdom is, is talking about this knowledge, this word. This word is what covers us. This word is what clothed us. That's why the Lord said this. This is the book of Isaiah. 30 and 1, he says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So it says, put on the comeliness, put on the clothing, put on the, the robe that cometh from the Lord, man. And that's going into what? His ways, his knowledge, his understanding. Let's go back. Sirach mm -hmm. 6. And 27, search and seek, and she shall be made known unto thee. And when thou hast got hold of her, let her not go. For at the last thou shalt find her rest, and that shall be turned to thy joy. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense for thee, and her chains a robe of glory. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace. Thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor, and shall put her about thee as a crown of joy. You see? So that crown that we have, we got it already, man. It's this knowledge. We got to hold it tight, man. The robes, the uh, uh, the beautiful garments, we got that already, man. We just got to hold it tight, man. You see? It says, my son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. You know? Because when we go to Revelation, this is the book of Revelation chapter seven and nine this is a uh, uh uh the apostle john seeing the ones that got the victory this is revelation seven and nine after this i beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands those palms in their hands representing the victory yeah when you go into it, it, it explains those were symbols of victory, right? But um, just a side note, when you go into these words, it says of all kindreds and nations, right? When you go into these words, in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 tribes of Jacob, nations, ethnos, a certain ethnicity, a tribe, nation, people group, you know, it says the same nature or genus. Right. They tell you the human family, but no, we're all not of the same nature. You know, we all uh, uh, have different characteristics that was given unto us from Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, according to our fathers and their um and their uh, uh, genealogies. It says in kindreds and people. A people, people group, tribe, nation of those who are of the same stock and language, you see, and we're of the stock of Abraham. But that's just a side note that these 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 people are talking about Israelites. And it says that they clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our power which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped the most high saying aman blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever amen right and one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb you see it says they have washed their robes and made them white that's why the scripture says, well, I was already in this app, so lucky. That's why the scripture says this. This is the book of uh, Psalms 119 and 4. Or it's 9, so lucky. It says, where with thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. See? So that's applying this wisdom. That's applying this knowledge that we're learning. And that's how we cleanse those robes. That's how we keep those robes white. This is um, Psalms 
This is Ecclesiastes 9 and 8. It says, let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. You see, and the ointment represents this word as well. You know, so it says, let our garments be always white. So we got to continually wash ourselves. And how do we do that? By taking heed unto the word in the book of Malachi. This is uh, the book of Malachi 3 and 2. It says, but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. So it's talking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, you see, and he is the word. So this word is what cleanses us. It's a refiner's fire and fuller soap. He shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver and shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So we're being cleansed. We're being purified by this word. This word is what uh, uh, um, is our garments. That's always white. This word is that crown that's set upon our head. This is the book of, uh, let's jump over to second Edris. It's the book of second Edris, chapter two. And let's start at verse 38. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. So it's talking about the same thing that the apostle John seen in revelation seven that we read verse 40, take thy number O Zion. See, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. So it's talking about those that have put on this knowledge, man. And it's the same vision that John is seeing in Revelation, the seventh chapter that we just read. And it says, take thy number, O Zion, which let you know that they're all Israel. It says, the number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high and his son. Now are they crowned and receive palms, receive the victory, just like Revelation 7. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands that giveth them the victory? So he answered and said unto them, it is the son of the heavenly father whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So when we go to first Corinthians, 15 and 57 it says but thanks be to the most high which giveth us the victory through our lord yahweh shai receiving those palms therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the lord and this is how we uh, keep those garments on let's go back to the first scriptures we started with revelation 16 and 15 Behold, I come as a thief, blesses he that watcheth, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and keepeth his garments, right? Be ye steadfast, unmovable, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You see? So we got to stay covered with this word, man. That's how we're justified. That's how, let's uh, uh, hit that other one, Revelation 3 and 11. It says, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast. What do we have? This knowledge, this word, that no man take thy crown, because this crown, the, 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 this word is our crown. Let's get a matter of fact, before we jump to that, let's get this. This is the book of Proverbs 4 and 5. It says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Talking about wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and, and, and understanding is uh, uh, how to apply, how to use this wisdom that we're learning. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her. She shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. You see? And that's why the scripture says this. This is the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon 6. 
In verse 20, it says, therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forever more because the scripture says what that that, that, that we are a king a kingdom of kings we are a nation of kings and priests man you see so we being those kings we should honor wisdom because that's what's going to bring us that that physical crown you see because this wisdom this this knowledge that we have is our spiritual crown which which is going to lead to us physically being crowned this is wisdom of solomon five and 15, but the righteous live forevermore. The reward also is with the Lord and the care of them is with the most high. Therefore, shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand for with his right hand shall he cover them and with his arm shall he protect him. You see, so if we hold firm to this word, man, it is going to bring us great glory from there. Let's. Um, let's get. um. Matter of fact, let's do this. Let's just type that in. Sirach 1 and 11. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. Verse 18. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, maketh peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are the gifts of the Heavenly Father, and it enlargeth their rejoicing that love him. Um, we read that 6 and 31. Uh, Sirach 15 and 6 He shall find joy in a crown of gladness And she shall cause him to inherit An everlasting name Who? Sirach 19 and 5 Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned But he that resisteth pleasures Crowneth his life You see So, so, so this word is our crown man. You know so we can't allow nobody to take it, not even ourselves. That's why it says he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. You know, this is the book of uh, Song of Solomon 3 and 11. It says, go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart. Now, when you go into the uh, 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 first Kings and when you go into Chronicles and you actually read about um, um, King Solomon's anointing, King Solomon's crowning, his mother didn't crown him. So what is this speaking of? This is uh, the book of. Sirach. 15. And one, he that feareth the Lord will do good and he that hath the knowledge of the law shall obtain her. And as a mother shall she meet him. And receive him as a wife married of a virgin. You see? So this word is compared to our mother because it's nourishing. And it's compared to our wife because it's nourishing us. You see? It's a help meet. It guides us and leads us and, 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 and comforts us. Right? And that's why it says this once again. Song of Solomon uh, uh, 3 and 11. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him. Talking about wisdom in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart in the day of his espousals. Let's get wisdom of Solomon. Eight and one. It says wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily and sweetly do as she order all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. I desired to make her my spouse, espousal, right? And I was a lover of her beauty, man. So this word is what's crowning us, man. And it's going to give us a physical crown from there. Let's end it on this. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 21. And one, it says to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the king shall joy in thy strength, O Yahweh Basham Yahushai, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Now, this can be applied to all us, man. All us are a hopeful elect, all those that's hoping to be of the tabernacles of David, who's hoping to sit uh, 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 at Yahweh Shai's table, man. Meaning what? Meaning um, we're, we're hoping to be those kings, those rulers, those joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Right. So we're all going to 
a, a joy in the strength of the Lord and, 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 and rejoice in his salvation. It's verse two. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholding the request of his lips. Salah. Same thing. The Lord said, I will give thee the, uh, the desires of thy heart. Right. For thou preventest him. Right. Which we mean meetest him. For thou meetest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee and thou gave it him even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him for thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance for the king trusteth in the Lord and through the mercy of the most high. He shall not be moved. Thy hand shall find out all thy enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thy anger. And what's that talking about? The nuclear destruction that's coming, man. You see? The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. It won't be not an Edomite left after the thousand years of slavery. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. The Lord said he uh, uh, He disappointed the, uh, the devices of the crafty. Roughly paraphrasing, man. You see? Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Those, 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 those ICBMs, man. Be thou exalted, Yahweh Basham Yahushai, in thy own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power, you know? And that's how we're going to get delivered, man, if we keep those garments, man, you know? Just like a, 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 a Joshua the high priest in the book of uh, of Zechariah, if I'm not mistaken, Zechariah, the fifth chapter. You know, is that Zechariah five? I don't want to just confirm it. Nope. Let me just confirm this real quick. The third chapter, I'm sorry, Salaki. Zechariah, the third chapter, you know. So those same filthy garments, man, was what us in the world. And now we got these new garments. You know, we got these white garments. We got these beautiful, glorious garments with a crown set upon our head, man. You see? And it's talking in its thoughts first with this knowledge. And if we endure within this knowledge, we're going to receive those things physically. Matter of fact, we can read this. This is a... Uh, Zechariah 3 and 1 and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him and the Lord said unto Satan the Lord the Lord rebuked thee O Satan even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee is not this a brand plucked out of the fire and through the spirit all of us are that brand plucked out of the fire man each and every last one of us says now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel same thing as us, right? And he answered and spake unto those that stood, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. So that iniquity, that, that filthy garments, that nakedness, man, a hey, hey, the Lord is uh, taking that away. And he gave us a, 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 a change of raiment. Meaning what? He clothed us with his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Just like when in, in, in the garden with Adam and Eve, they weren't physically naked when they sold those fig leaves upon themselves. That was different doctrines and religions of these other nations that was during that time. So the Lord removed that and gave them his own clothing, which is what our own way, our own heritage, our own understanding of how to serve him. Verse five. And I said, let them set a fair mitry upon his head. So they set a fair mitry upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by you know, and that's the diadem that is spoke about, you know, when it spoke about the the the, the, uh, the righteousness, let it be a robe and a diadem upon thy head, you know. So this knowledge is our covering, man. So 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 we must uh, continue in it, you know, continue to uh, build ourselves through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahusha in his word and his knowledge, renewing our mind, you know. So, Lord willing, I pray and hope this was edifying. The water, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Call Halal Him La. 
Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Barachah HaKwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shalom.